Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos coming at you. Kevin Knuth, one of the most respected of scientists on the Danny Jones podcast, said something quite remarkable. Now, I've been saying this a little bit. I said it when I reviewed Richard Dolan's important book, critically important book, A History of USOs, which kind of gives the lie to those who say, yeah, everybody who writes books are grifters. No, everybody who writes books are not grifters. Some of them are valid historians. Some of them are real ufologists who happen to transmit their actual information through the written word rather than video and pictures. But books are no less an evidence for UFOs as videos and pictures. And in this sense, in this respect, I was very excited to hear what Kevin told Danny Jones on his interview. Let's go to the clip. Do you think it's possible that any of this stuff could be some like military stuff that we don't know about? No. 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 Absolutely not. Really? For one good reason. And the reason sitting on your shelf right over there, Richard Dolan's book on USOs. Richard Dolan has a new book on yeah. under unidentified submerged objects. Right. These yeah, we, things we have been here Yeah, these years. things have been observed by and, and recorded in ship's logs for over 150 years. Mm. You have reports from the 1800s of a disc coming out of the water, hovering next to the ship, and then shooting off into the clouds. And that's been going on for 150 years. Right. Yeah. But... You can't. And once you know that those cases exist, mm -hmm. you can't just say it's got to be Russian or Chinese. That doesn't hold water anymore. It's silly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but don't you think it's possible that we could have got our hands on some of that stuff and like recreated it ourselves? So some of the mm -hmm. modern day things could be could be modern secret mm -hmm. techno military technology. That's true. But the cases from the 1800s certainly can't. That you can't explain away with technology. And so, right. so you can't, you, you don't get rid of the extraterrestrial or non-human hypothesis by just looking at the military technology to yes. argument today. The 150-year-old cases. So I think that is a stellar and significant observation that some skeptics and critics just are simply not taking into account and they are being strictly illogical about it because the historical case has been made by truly one of the cream of the crop ufologists on the planet, Richard Dolan, in his book. And this book is a first of three. It's, it's a triple, it's a trilogy of information on the USOs. So I think this is critically important because the reality from history of Alexander the Great can't be made through videos and pictures. It can only be made through the historical record. The validity and value and reality of the reigns of, say, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs can only be made through the ancient texts which we have and we have translated. The pyramid texts, the coffin texts, the Egyptian book of the dead, the books of breathings, etc. Those aren't invalidated because they're ancient and old. Those aren't invalidated because there's no videos and pictures. That's a genuine part of history that we now can say validly, this was some of the ancient Egyptians' rituals. This is some of their history, etc. And it's not fake simply because we haven't seen it in a video or a picture, or if we haven't been to Egypt, etc. History is absolutely a valid witness when it's done correctly, when it's done using the Bayesian probability theories of could this have happened this way or did this happen at all compared to it being invented. We're well aware that Thucydides, uh, his Herodotus has been accused of this somewhat, and uh, the Anabasis of Xenophon, etc. I've got my texts up here. 
some of the historical materials from the Roman writers uh, may not be exactly as it occurred, but we do know that Caesar crossed the Rubicon, for instance. We do know Herodotus visited Egypt and traveled all over the ancient world. And based on the information that the Greeks had in his day, 500 BC, some of his adventures were indeed wacky to them. Later on, modern historians read some of what Herodotus said about some ancient cultures and said he was just inventing it or making it up because that's not what our history tells us. And yet it is the modern historical biases from the historians that want to make Herodotus into a certain type of a historian or a, a specific kind of explorer with their modern limited understanding stamped back onto Herodotus so that even some modern historians have accused Herodotus of being the father of lies. And there's another side of that coin that says the modern bias is what is grossly incorrect and misapplied to the history of science and the science of history, etc., History itself is a valid witness to the reality of certain events, the Korean War, etc., the World War I, World War II, etc., the existence and founding of Mormonism by Joseph Smith. Maybe some of the specifics that he said weren't exactly as happened, but we know Joseph Smith existed, for instance. Some of his tales and some of his ideas are exquisitely different. They are exquisitely interesting. They're certainly not the way we moderns do religion as such with seer stones and things like that. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen. You see how that works. The 1800s test cases that Dolan does mention, one of them that I specifically uh, mentioned was, oh, I've got to get through the introduction. Mysterious lights seen by, of all people, Christopher Columbus. And Dolan has this issue on page 44 and 45. And it was extremely interesting how potentially that could have been similar to UFOs. There are UFO recordings happening between 1717 and 1899, as Dolan explained in chapter two. You can't just dismiss that as Russian or Chinese or modern tech when none of this stuff existed back then in any country on the entire planet. That just doesn't hold mustard. Newth makes a very solid point. And so, and he describes several different test cases with several different uh, sailing ships and the logs from the captains before there was such a thing as super duper, absolutely no one gets to see top secret stuff by the FBI and CIA. They were simply recording their information in their logs, ship logs, diaries, and journals. And that record is a matter of historical record. July 16th, 1864, the Gulf of Thailand in the South China Sea. Again, Observe that it's not just at one specific point on our planet. It's absolutely everywhere, all over the world. March 22nd, 1870 is the Atlantic Ocean area. In April 1875, there was a Gulf of Mexico near Veracruz, Mexico. In 1877, on May 2nd, there was a Mediterranean Sea experience near Sicily. 
See, the May 5th, 1879 was the Persian Gulf. How many more of these do you want? May 1880, also in the Persian Gulf. June 5th, 1880, Arabian Sea off of the Indian coast, hundreds of miles away. November 12th, 1877, the Atlantic Ocean near Cape Rice in Canada, thousands and thousands of miles in a different area. August 29th, 1890, the Atlantic Ocean near the United States coast, down there by North Carolina, etc., etc., etc. October 1891, the South China Sea, way over on the other opposite side of the Pacific Rim of Fire. In 18 or January 1892, Punta Abreos, Baja, California, Mexico, another one on the Pacific side rather than the Atlantic side, etc. And all of these events, and some are more valuable than others, some are more detailed than others, right? Every one of them before 1900, you can't just dismiss the historical record when so many different people from different walks of life, with different attitudes, with different philosophies, different religions, different wealth statuses, etc., all of these people were experiencing various different types of encounters, which has been dutifully noted by Richard Dolan. Early February 1894, the west coast of Florida. January 27th, 1895, Lake Michigan. July 24th, 1895, Lake Nicovi, Gabon, Africa. All over the world, very, very interesting encounters. The first two chapters of Dolan's book describes that. The historical record clearly shows there were anomalous situations of craft either leaving the ocean or leaving a lake or hovering over the ocean and then disappearing back down under it, etc. This is quite significant. Kevin Newth puts the test on saying it's really honestly quite naive to say, well, it was either Russian or Chinese. <laughs> it couldn't have been Russian, Chinese, American, Mexican, European, or anywhere else, Australian in the entire world in the 1800s, the 1700s, and in some cases, as early back as the 1400s, that's been established. Well, we didn't get to see them. No kidding. That was before you were a twinkle in your mama's eye. Just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's not real. I have news for you. There's a lot of things people see in Africa that if you've never been to Africa, you simply haven't seen, but that has nothing to do with whether it's real or not, or whether their experiences that they are describing are real or not, because the brutal fact is our own each individual experience is not the basis of universal reality for all of the rest of mankind. We need to swallow the ego and the pride very, very much in order to grasp that fact. Your claimed objectivity is not the basis of how the universe runs. Yes, we would like to think we're really that important. The bad news is you're not. So that's what I have tonight. Appreciate you watching the show. As always, hit the like and subscribe and share the video with those you love and care about. I will be back as I find more information. Fun to see Kevin Knuth on this. I'll catch up to you as soon as I can. See you soon.